Grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ from Nazareth, Yahshua, the Messiah, to the elect across the earth. Uh, shout out to all our partners. We love you guys so much. Uh, I'm excited for this message. It doesn't have to be a long message. It's an exposing message to expose a very strong tactic of the a tactic of the enemy. The word of God says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So get your pen, get your pad. Let's go. We got to get this in. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me for all sins known and unknown. Wash me in your holy blood, Lord. I repent, Lord. I need you in my life. Help me to be a better person, to walk in righteousness, to honor you. I reject Satan. I rebuke him in Jesus' name. Give me the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Help me to receive your word and walk in it. May your word be a light unto my feet. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name we pray. Amen. So, I want you to write this down. The devil's pie. Write that down. The devil's pie. I believe that this is the revelation of the Illuminati pyramid. I believe that this is what it really truly means. And I'm going to just show you a diagram. And uh, just to educate you that will strengthen and also encourage you. <clears throat> a couple subtitles for this message would be Flipping Bricks for Pharaoh And also uh, Pimp Pharaoh and His Hoes Now some of you might be like ah, How could a man of God say that Well it's a reality Okay um, A lot of these places that you see the, the kingdom of Satan Operating in A lot of these false preachers False prophets They operate out of a pimp spirit and They can't be a pimp Without hoes, without people that he subjects to his power and will. So anyway, you can write that down as a subtitle. Now, we're going to cut straight to it, okay? The way Satan has designed this system, the way he has... Well, go to 2 Corinthians with me. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. A lot of you know this by heart and that's excellent, but we still want to go to it. Chapter 4, verse 4, it says in Jesus Christ's name, verse 3 down. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. For the in whom the God of this world, lowercase g, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the God, glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see that? So, there is a world which I'm going to tell you, man, I use this example a lot, but the first Matrix movie has so much like insight to it. And I don't promote worldly movies and nothing like that. You don't have to see it. But I'm telling you that there really is a Matrix where, you know, the guy Neo, which is just means one backwards. He didn't realize everything around him was not what it seemed to be. It wasn't real. The agents will go in and out of bodies and take over people. Demons go in and out of body and take over people. And when you get saved, you realize this stuff is not what it seems. The, the holidays we celebrate and the traditions and the paganism and the antichrist system and the Illuminati. All of this becomes a reality and we go, wow, like Christ is real and this world is not what it seems to be. So Satan is the god of this world, this worldly system. You see, the media, the banking system, the, the religious aspect of it. All of these things are brought in under the umbrella of Satan's kingdom. So I call this the devil's pie. You're really going to love this message. I'm telling you, this message is so powerful. And I pray the Lord Jesus Christ had, I pray the Lord Jesus Christ has his way. Lord, speak through me with power and authority for the hearers. To be convicted and to get right. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we, we talked about that. So, Satan is the God of this world. How many of you have ever heard the term the Nicolaitans? Right? Revelation chapter 2. Um, I'll just show you. It, it, it basically just says, and I'll read it verbatim. Chapter 2. I'm going to go quick with the scriptures. Because you can always pause the video, go back. You know the deal. 
verse 6, it says, But thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate, says the Lord. Well, the word Nicolaitans breaks down into two words. Nico, conquerors, laity, people. They are the rulers over the people. They conquer the people. Who was Jesus really going to war with in this realm, in the human being realm? Those in religious power, the Pharisees and the rulers, right? Because he said in Matthew, he said, you know how to go. You know how to get there. You don't go, but you stop others from going. That's Matthew 23. You could read it on your own time, right? So he was speaking directly to them. You're not caught a deep revelation when the, when the Pharisees came to John. And they said, are you this man? Are you the prophet? Are you Isaiah? Who are you? He said, I ain't that man. No, I'm not that one. He, they said, tell us who you are that may, we may report back to the ones who sent us. And that's when he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. But how do you know that it didn't have a supernatural meaning to it? Who was it they were reporting to? You think it was just the high priest and all of that? Or were they reporting to the fallen angels and to Satan? So anyways, this message was birthed now. I've been sitting on this for a while. And I've been inspired because of so many emails that we get. The Ghetto Gospel Ministries is a outreach ministry to go into the darkest places, right? The slums, you know what I'm saying? To reach those that are feel hopeless. To reach the ones other, uh, you know... Self-righteous ministries drive by and don't want to have anything to do with the drunks, the drug addicts, the pill heads, prostitutes, strippers, gangbangers, crooked lawyers, you know, ex-mobsters. Like, you know, there's so many different types of people that are being cast into the side. And this ministry, because of all we went through, God has given us a special place of compassion. What that means, though, is that this ministry has gone through a lot of perseverance and long suffering because we've had to do a lot of things on our own to get places through trusting Christ because our base of people are struggling people. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the bottom of what they would call the barrel, right? The bottom of the bucket, the one nobody really wants in their church. But I want to testify. I know Lion testify. I know Lioness testifies, and other brothers and sisters in the ministry. We thank God for y'all. Never be embarrassed or ashamed with your emails. We get them all the time. It's on a weekly basis. It's it's actually it almost seems like a copy and paste from y'all. Praise the Lord. We love you guys so much. We've never really found a ministry like this. The word is so strong. My life is changing. I, I want to carry my cross. I want to be a partner. I just, I'm poor. I can't support. I could barely do 20 bucks a month. If that, I feel sorry about that. I hate the fact I can't. And a lot of y'all get that conviction because you're struggling. But y'all got to know something. You are so precious to us. You're so valuable to us. <laughs> the gospel was preached to the poor. So, yes, we deal with a lot of the washed out, been beat down, been cast out, been through the struggle. Yeah, I mean, we get a lot of people that come into this ministry. But, you know, that's an honor for us. Because when I look at the life of Christ, when I look at the book of Acts, Jesus says the gospel is preached to the poor. And I'm going to keep it real. People that have been through the struggle... Whether it's guys that have been in and out of jail, sisters that used to strip, or people in general that just been average struggling people. In my wife and I's opinion, they're like the coolest people. You know what I'm saying? Not in their sin. I mean, when they come around and get saved and become a part of the ministry because they've been through so much. They don't play games. They don't sugarcoat. They don't act stupid. Like, they're just so hungry for God, and they're so down to earth. They're fun to talk with. Like, we love y'all. So, in our opinion, the bottom of the barrel got the best flavor. You know what I'm saying? When we go get the oxtail from the Jamaican spot or or the, the, the goat meat from the Kenyan, you know what I mean? If my wife cooks at the Kenyan spot, I'm just giving different examples. You know what I mean? Or that chicken stew from the Dominican or the Spanish spot. Y'all know the best flavor is at the bottom. 
<laughs> Best flavors at the bottom of that bucket. You know what I'm saying? You kind of come. Don't come at 12 o'clock. Come in around like 5 or 6 when the oxtail or the whatever soup has been sitting and all the good seasoning done settled to the bottom. And you're like, hey, man. Throw that rice. Don't give me too much rice. Don't be trying to fool me with your rice, man. I want that meat. I want that gravy. And scrape from that bottom. Pull it on up. Bring that up. Stir it up. So that's what we love about y'all. Okay? The, now, I'm talking about people that are genuinely poor. People that are genuinely struggling. That email us and tell us. I'm talking to y'all. I'm not talking about some of you that lie and you just don't want to support God's kingdom. That's between you and God. You're going to have to answer to him. Okay. Um, but for those that struggle, yeah, I mean, like this message, I really, I know this message is going to bless you. It really is because we don't been through it. We, we don't been through it. Don't mind that. I just, boop, boop, in a meeting, can't, can't talk, but you got to hear this message. Don't get distracted. Let nothing decide, track you. Let's focus on this. So enough with the shame. You being poor has nothing to do with who you are as a person. In fact, one thing I loved about Paul, the apostle, he said, I can do all things through Christ, right? Who strengthens me. Everybody quotes that, but they forget to talk about the before and after. He said, I know how to abase. I know how to be abound. I know how to be hungry. I know how to be full. I can do all things. You see the difference there? See, my wife and I have been through it. We've had peaks and valleys, ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? But the most, the, the most well-rounded saint is one whose walk in Christ has been a roller coaster. Not a pretend facade plateau where they pretend everything's been all right their whole life. No. Trials and tribulations come. Seasons of joy comes. Peace comes. Violent storms come. You got to be ready. You know what I mean? You got to be ready. My eyes be looking googly sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the camera. My eyes be like, boop. But anyways, you got to be ready. You know what I'm saying? It's going to make you well-rounded. Don't complain when you go through poverty. And don't become cocky and high-minded when you get wealth. Be at the, just be, just be normal. Remember what Paul said? He said, none of these things, what? Move me. None of them move me. So, there's an Old Testament, uh, I believe it's Proverbs or Ecclesiastes. It said, Lord, don't give me too little where I got to steal. You know what I mean? Take your name in vain. Don't give me too much where I get overly fed and get lazy and forget about you. I'm good just in the middle. That's a very humble prayer. Because not everybody is, and, and don't get it twisted too, because there's some people that go through poverty and they think that makes them godly. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. But then there's other people that think gain is godliness. Remember what Paul said in Thessalonians? He said, um, charge those that are rich, right? To be willing to communicate, not high-minded, not. So in other words, he was saying there are some people that are called to have wealth that God can entrust to help supply the needs of true ministry, that's why you have to be very careful who you support. You have to, because what the devil will try to do, because he knows you'll, fa you'll find a real ministry eventually. And I thank God we are a real ministry. He'll allow you to go through past experiences of greedy, money hungry, devilish people that claim to be preachers and apostles. And they'll use and manipulate. I see the videos all the time. And trust me. You don't want to even be near with the judgment that's going to come on them. So don't you worry about a thing. But the devil will try to get you bitter. So when you finally come across a real ministry, you've been so wounded. Any topic of financial uh, support, it, it makes you like, oh, no, not brother works, not him. Like, for real, don't bring your wounds over here. Get cleaned and let's be realistic with this. Paul said there are some people that are rich that are going to be used to help supply the needs of the saints, right? True apostles and leaders. But he also said the poor get the gospel. We cannot treat a poor man better than a rich man that comes into the ministry. The book of James says you become a judge of evil thoughts. You have to discern people in the spirit, not their image. 
Yes, the image can mean something if a if a guy comes in with a, you know what I mean, dressed in a demonic way, or if a woman comes in as a harlot and she claims to be in the Lord 10 years, there's a problem. But you get what I'm saying. What did the Lord say to the prophet about David? Because he was a short brother. Yeah, I'm sure it was that. The prophet said to David, uh, excuse me, the prophet, the Lord said to the prophet, don't judge on the outward. So I tell you that. How would you have treated John the Baptist? No one he's the greatest prophet ever to live. But would you have judged him wrong because he didn't have a suit on? Because his hair was out? Because he ate locusts and wild honey? Some of you, most of you get it. Some of you, I just it's almost like I feel sorry for the messages you have sent us. Like, how could you get that cold and be a Christian? Like, it's it's actually so sad we just feel sorry for you. Messages that we get. This one woman said to me, Well, brother, I've confirmed that your word is accurate and sure indeed. But I am here to rebuke you because of your bald head. You look like a Nazi. You need to take this to the Lord. Look, lady, I repent for having a genetic disorder where my daddy's bald. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't going to do the comb over and walk in the wind sideways. I done shaved my head for years. It's my style. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you that cold? Cause I got a shaved head, you rebuking me? Cause I remind, are you, for, are you for real? But that's the mind, the Pharisees. They had Jesus Christ right there in their presence. God was in the flesh, right there, and they called him a devil. That's terrifying, terrifying. Cause anybody truly with the Holy Ghost could just spend one week going through our videos and you should know our fruit in this ministry you should know what we're about you should know who really we are from you should know that the lord jesus christ is truly with us so anyways never judge by appearance so if you're struggling and you poor and you've been hesitating to email us because you're embarrassed don't be don't be okay we have a special calling for the strugglers the lost and 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 you know what we have saints of God that the Lord will assign and, and them, some that he has assigned that do help that kind of make up for where y'all can. He balances it out. God is fair. He's the one that told us to uproot, come down to Atlanta and full time push the gospel. So don't be ashamed. If you know this ministry is real, you better. Uh, what's wrong with you? Where's your discernment? If you're used to the Joe Osteens and those cats, you can't compare them to us. If that spirit is in you, you're not going to recognize the truth of the gospel. You're going to have what Paul said in Corinthians, another gospel, another Jesus. So this word, the devil's pie is so powerful. And I want to encourage all our struggling brothers and sisters that are in this ministry or that just follow this ministry as we follow Christ. I got a great word for you. Okay. We don't been through that. We've had seasons where I was doing amazing working, making money. My wife is stay home, hard working wife and mother. We were able to put tens of thousands of dollars of our own hard-earned money into the kingdom and that's a fact i speak the truth in christ and lie not but then there's been times early in our walk where we were looking for change just for diapers but you know what that made us a better person never be ashamed of that it makes you a better person that you can experience each side that you've been through struggle and you've been through prosperity you went back to struggle then you got a little bit of prosperous you went back sometimes that's a healthy thing because it keeps you from changing character some of y'all might not be built for that you might change and start talking like mr rogers if you got some money in your bank you know what I'm saying? Or some of you might get too worldly and be robbing and lying and stealing for money if you're struggling. No, none of these things should move you. 
Christ is, is your foundation no matter where your financial status is. So the devil's pie is based upon the, the way Satan has, has set up his earthly kingdom in the world, right? In the worldly kingdom, not the earth, but the world. And I'm going to expose him today in Jesus' name. So Exodus 5, it's a whole lot. I'm going to paraphrase it to save time, but I want you to read it. It's about when Moses and the children of Israel let the Pharaoh know, hey, we're going to see the Lord in the wilderness three days. We're going to go and see the, our God. Okay, you're not our Lord. That's our God. We're going to go see him. But what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh command, commanded the, the slave masters and all the, the task masters, I should say, to remove the straw from the bricks. Remember I told you flipping bricks for Pharaoh. That was a play on words because I grew up around hustlers that moved drugs and bricks of cocaine and all type of stuff. So, you know, it's almost like hustling for Pharaoh, right? Flipping bricks for him, right? He removed the straw so the children of Israel would be so worried about they had to complete the same amount of work in the same amount of time with no straw. You know how hard that is. The straw was a binding agent. It made it so much easier to make the bricks. So why did he do that? He did it to take their eyes off of. He did it to take their eyes off of Christ. That they would be focused on the bricks. On how to meet Pharaoh's expectations. But the Bible says you can only choose one or the other. God or mammon. We serve God the Father. And because of that, mammon becomes a servant under our feet. So you have to know this principle. Okay. Now. Why did I bring up that up now? Because first off. I mentioned the Nicolaitans. Right. These most. Not all. But most of the religious organizations out right now. The pastors and all these. A, a lot of them is going to get hard judgment. Because right now they're the ones that are ruling over the people for personal gain. They're getting all the wealth. I mean, if you knew how much they're making, it would be insane. So you, you wouldn't even believe it. Mega churches are popping up everywhere, right? While the true prophetic ministries, yes, we, we get a lot of the bottom of the barrel, people that can't support financially, and all these mega churches is making hundreds of thousands of dollars within months. But guess what? Tables will turn. The Bible says it. The wealth of the wicked shall transfer to the righteous. God knows what he's doing. He has true ministries like us. And I say that confidently because Christ is the leader of this ministry, not me. True ministries like us who have gone through it to where money is not a God to us. So when God builds up this ministry, we'll look at the money just like they laid the money at the apostles feet and go, what do you want us to do with the Lord? We send missionaries, make movies, do this, do that. Widows, Bibles, all of that Not an issue Because we're not bound to that Paul said I count everything Dung for the name of Christ Why? Nothing should be binding you You see that So we see the Nicolaitans The conquerors of the people But there is a true Church government that is rising up And if you read Ephesians 4.11 And you read all through the book of Acts it talks about the church government, true saints of God that will be able to govern the people led by Christ, not their own ego or will or motives. You see the difference? The reason why a lot of pastors are afraid of true men of God, especially this ministry, there's a lot of you, you could tell the local pastor that you was going to. And a lot of times, I don't like him. I don't like him. Why? Because he knows I'm assigned, just like others, to be a, a, uh, you know how like the police have police that watch over them, they're called the internal affairs, if the police get out of line, they need somebody that comes and checks them, see a lot of these preachers and pastors ain't got nobody checking them, so they're just having all types of fun, you know what I mean, using all type of demon powers and doctrines and devils and manipulating people for money and for personal gain and sleeping with women, thus says the Lord and all of this wickedness, right, Jezebel running churches and Ahab bowing down, all of this, right, the internal affairs are coming, there are saints of God that have been marinating in the wilderness for years, 
and we coming. So let your pastors know. Let all those people you was raised with, their foolishness is about to come to an end. And when the true saints of God come in and declare judgment on congregations, you're going to see things happen. Because God ain't playing with nobody. You know what he's concerned with? The, sh the sheep, the flocks. Let them go. Let them go, you pharaohs. I call all these fake pastors and false preachers and these mega ministries pharaohs. Let them go. In Jesus Christ's name, let them go. Keep the building. Keep all that prosperity you done built up. Let the people go, though. Let them, let them go. Because they're coming over to the real side now. Men of God who won't, who won't manipulate them and use all type of trickery will preach them the real true word of the living God. And they'll know by nature they got to support. We don't have to manipulate them. It's coming, y'all. Pharaoh is going to let them go. Those who want to stay can stay. The ground will open up on them. But Pharaoh is about to be addressed. So I needed to say all of that before we get into this amazing quick message called the devil's pie. So there is true church government. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay. Now that I said all of that. Here you got the Pharaoh. He's like, nah. You want to play the game? You want to go seek the true God? I'm going to make your life a living hell. You are going to you are going to have to labor without straw. Now here it is. I made a chart. We're going to discuss this in a minute, okay? I found out the hidden revelation of the Illuminati pyramid. I know what it really stands for. They can say all they want, but I, the Lord has revealed it. It's done. And you're going to get it today. You're going to get the truth of the revelation. Glory be to Christ. What will be revealed? Now, partially, there was a man who actually went to prison. This was like 10 years ago. When I was very young in the Lord, he brought something up similar to this. And the Lord brought it to my remembrance. And I said, oh, that goes perfectly with this message. So I'm very grateful to tell y'all about this. Now, we went over the Nicolaitans. We went over uh, Corinthians about the God of this world, right? We're bringing it all together. Now, I want you to think logically. And I'm, I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see it for what it is. Let's say you make, just on average now, 500 a week, which most people don't make that. But let's just, we'll aim higher than lower just to prove my point. $2,000 a month. How much is your rent? On average. What is rent nowadays? At least between A and a G. Some of y'all get away with it, and that's cool. Some of y'all got good deals, and uh, amen, praise God, I'm happy for you. But the average house pays between eight and a G. And that's just average. How much is your, your light bill? How much is your food bill? How much do you pay on toiletries and clothing for your children? How much is your car insurance or car payment? How much is your phone bill? How much is your gas? How much do you pay the grocery market? We're going to get to this. So there's a chart I'm going to show you. Now, this chart is mind blowing. OK, like I said, I'm going to show you the hidden meaning of why the top of the pyramid is separated on the Illuminati pyramid, why the eye is separated from the rest of the pyramid. OK, I said all that to say this. Don't let the devil distract you from going to the wilderness and seeking Christ. That's what he wants. He wants you to stress about bills. Now, I get it. We're in the world. We're not of the world. We got to pay the rent. We got to pay the lights. I got to pay insurance or I can't drive with my family to feed homeless people. You see what I'm saying? Of course, we got to deal with this. But you cannot let it hinder you from focusing on the Lord. That's good. It's the devil's pie. And once you are free from this and you see it for what it really is, even if you're struggling, you're going to be in joy. You're going to be in joy and peace. And that's why I wanted to release this message. Because so many of y'all have been emailing us just, I'm ashamed. I can't support. I love you guys. I will live holy. Because we have a list of requirements to be a partner in this ministry. We're not looking for numbers. We're happy when they come. You can't just join up and be worldly and, and, and devilish. And nah. No. No, it's like the Gideon War. We'll take 300 over 3,000 if, if the 300 are potent. We don't expect you to be perfect. 
but reasonably live holy and righteous to the best you can to honor Christ, not to earn your way into heaven, but to honor him. To prove your repentance by your deeds, the Bible says. To study to show yourself approved. To pray often. Fast when God tells you to. To fellowship. The Bible says you should not forsake the assembling. Every Thursday night we have a conference with our partners. We gather. And then every four to five-ish months we gather physically. We do a conference. Tell people about the ministry. Right? Share the videos. Be bold with the gospel, right? And the last one is financially support. But we have a little note that if you're poor and you're struggling, don't let that make you run away because of that. We wouldn't do that to you. We have over 200 videos on our YouTube channel. Show me one video that was solely dedicated to you giving to this ministry. You know what? You can't find it. That should tell you about our character. Huh? That should silence the, the liars in the back. Why would we do that? So we want you to come in. Because some of y'all, just because you can't, you can't financially support, but you can support by your prayers, by living holy and righteous. Joshua was a mighty warrior. You think he came in with a bag of money? And if you are a person that is financially strong, what are you doing? What well, unto you, you lay up your riches for yourself instead of moving God's kingdom on the earth with what you can do. That's terrible. You become a lover of money. Money ain't evil. It's the love of money. We have sacrificed tens of thousands. And it's one of the reasons doors is open for us spiritually. You want the works. How do y'all get these revelations, the power, all of that? Submitting to Christ and going through tests in life. And we still go through tests. So here it is. The devil's power. I'm going to show you this diagram and I'm going to expose the enemy. And I need you to be encouraged. I need you to see this. Jesus said, foxes got holes, birds got nests. I ain't got, the son of man ain't got nowhere to lay. <laughs> How would you feel if it were you trying to go see about this Jesus Christ? You've been hearing great things about him. And he turned around and said, I don't know what you're seeking me for. I ain't got no money. I ain't got a pot to pee in. You know what I'm saying? You sure you want to follow me? How honorable it was to follow him regardless. How honorable it is for y'all to follow this ministry as we follow Christ. Regardless of how people judge us because I don't put on a suit. I like suits. Eventually, I'll put one on, you know what I'm saying? But it won't be to please the Pharisees. It will be when God tells me to put on a suit. You understand? And there's other things I want to talk about with this ministry, but not now, okay? But there's some changes taking place. There's a level, we're, we're lifting up to another level in Christ. And we want you to be with us if you're his, if you're a child of God. Bless you for sticking by our side, okay? So, I'm saying all that to say this, that is the tactic of Satan using Pharaoh is when he knows you're ready, you're like, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to see Christ, I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast. It's kind of like the spiritual wilderness Moses and them wanted to go into. When the devil finds out about that, because he got, he got demons that'll try to like, you know, um, not stock, well, stock, yeah, they will be scouts, they'll scout and spy and try to spy on the children of God to bring back to Satan and say, oh, no, she's, she don't care no more. She trying to, all right, uh, all right, this is what the devil do. All right, I want you, demon, I want you to go and infiltrate her boss at work, make him fire her. What I'm telling you is so deep of revelation, I need you to pay attention. This is how the spirit realm can work. It's why you got to be on prayer. You got to be praying for the people around you so the devil can't use them as pawns against you. He'll be like, go and cause that boss not to like her. Okay, and you, I want you to go. I want you to cause a situation to happen where, yeah, you know I mean, her pet dog just died or whatever. I want you and the devil will assign real witches and warlocks to pray against you and have, you know, bills come flooding in and all of a sudden the 
some past debt catches up with you. And now, instead of focusing on the Lord, what's going on, sister or brother? Oh, Lord, uh, oh, I got my bills doing. My, my boss just gave me my final warning for no reason. <laughs> what is what is the devil doing? He's laughing. Like, <laughs> Who wants to go in the wilderness now? Now, get back to work, slave. I'm your pimp. You my hoe. Get that without that straw. Yeah, that's right. Shut your mouth. You want to go in the wilderness and see Jesus. All I did was ruffle your feathers in your life. I done made you get fired at work. You know what I mean? Raise the electric bill. And now all of a sudden you can't go see Jesus. Ha! You ain't real. See, that's how the devil is for real. But when you get them saints of God, no matter if they very prosperous or whether they struggling in poverty, they just flatline. He can't do nothing to them. They already dead to the world. That's why you got to die to yourself and die to the world. Hallelujah. That way nothing will move you. It don't matter if if your, your, your mother hit the lottery. Let's say she worldly and she do the numbers every night. She hit five mil and throw you 500 thou. What honestly would that do to your walk? Some of y'all, it would be bad for you to have that. You would just change. Start talking like Mr. Rogers, Pastor Caviar. You know what I'm saying? Forgetting the people around you. Starting to think everybody's after your money. You know what I'm saying? Some of you would be terrible. And then some of you would be terrible to go through a struggling situation. Because you get mad at God. Because you've never struggled. Maybe you grew up in a nice home. Your mom and dad did everything for you. It's good to be well-rounded. You see, it's good to be well-rounded. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So when you flatline and you're dead, what can Satan throw at you? Yo, you lost your job? God will give you a new one. That anointing, that blessing. Oh, I love the way this word is going. That anointing, that blessing that Jacob had. Remember when the uncle tried to do him dirty? What, is he supposed to worry about it? The anointing was on him. God made the flock and the animals multiply on his behalf, not the uncle. So it don't matter what they conspire. It don't matter. Look at the electric company. This cat wakes up and just decides, I'm going to up my, my electric bill 30% for the people. Who do you think you are, bruh? In the middle of winter, you want to jack the electric price 30%. Yo, that's wicked. The electric company, man, that's why I always tell them whenever I call and pay that bill, I'm like, listen, this call's being recorded. Let all y'all know and let your boss and let the owner know. You may provide light to the houses, but Jesus Christ provides light to the world. <laughs> I know one of y'all is going to take that. You're going to call you gonna call your electric company tomorrow. Just, yeah, hello. I got something to say to you. Jesus, don't mess up my slogan either. Don't be saying it all wrong. Say it right if you're going to say it, you know what I'm saying? And maybe put it on a shirt, you know what I'm saying? But the point is, don't let your circumstances stop you from seeking the God. Ah! You hear me? Remember what the Bible says. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven and righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. There's a reason. The devil knows that principle. So when you go to seek the kingdom or go into the wilderness like Moses and them, he's going to do everything in his power to do what? Make you turn around and go back to brick making. Flipping bricks for Pharaoh. Getting pimped by the Pharaoh. Don't let it happen. Stay focused on the Lord. He'll take care of you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And leave you begging for bread. If you are living righteous. Now if you're living in sin. Don't come emailing me. Brother your word ain't true. Because I'm suffering. Well get off the crack. And stop sleeping around bro. What do you want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when you're walking right. You know what I'm saying? You leave God right. There's been seasons. Let me see. Okay. There has been seasons. In our life, in this ministry, where we just kept giving out, giving out, giving out, giving out. And it's almost like people were in a comatose, like not giving back. And we got under the pressure, like, oh, Lord, like we don't gave out so much, but we got rent to pay. We got this to pay. We got that to pay. Just a thousand CDs we came to Atlanta with. Those CDs should be $15 a piece for the Liquid Fire album. It's, just, it's a, almost an $8,000 investment it cost us to make that album from top from top to bottom. 
You know what I mean? Do you know how many we've given out? I'm not saying this to boast. I'm being, I want you to see the fruit of this ministry. We've given out over nine, about 900 of those CDs. Just shy. That should show you where we are. Because a greedy person in the gospel would be like, uh-uh, that's, a, that's over a $10,000 return. I'm not giving that away. But see, our love for the lost as shepherds is more important than your money. You see the difference? So when you flatline like that, what can Satan do to you to stop you from seeking the kingdom of heaven and righteousness? And because we knew this order, God has always taken care of us. He always had a ram in the bush. He would always have somebody that would hear from God and be like, you know what? I love this ministry. I'm going to support them. Boom. And we're like, Lord, wow. Like you go to the fish's mouth because we're not serving mammon. We're serving Christ. Hallelujah. So without further ado, I want to show you this devil's pie for you to get educated. And then, of course, we got more sermons coming. I just want to give this message because so many of you have been emailing us and it's like a pattern. And I'm like, no, we got to kill this. Stop being ashamed. Now, if you got issues and you addicted to stuff and you don't want to work, you're like, I'm poor, brother. No, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. That's what the Bible says. But for people that legitimately struggle and they had that curse on their life, why would we judge you, man? Come on, sister. Come on, brother. You, matter of fact, you should apologize to God and repent for even thinking we're like that. We're very laid back. We love the poor. We love everybody. Middle class. Don't think we're exclusively slums. Like we want to reach the middle class. We want to reach high up places and, and high up places. The Bible says your gifts shall make room for you. Paul was able to preach to kings. Can I get an amen? I know this ministry through Christ has a calling. I've already witnessed to celebrities. I don't have to tell y'all that. That's for another day. Reality. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. The only way you can hate us is you hate Christ. That's a fact. That ain't cocky. That ain't boastful. You might dislike my style or something like that, but you can never say we are not sent by God or you would be lying and you know it. Once in a while, I put on a suit so you judgmental people can like the message. Maybe gel my beard if it offends you. But it makes no difference. We are sent from the Holy Ghost. And our fruit and actions prove it. Not just this. So we're going to go ahead and get into this devil's pie. This amazing revelation. And encourage you beautiful people out there. Don't let the devil distract you. He sees you ready to go into the wilderness and seek the face of God. And he'll try to launch financial stress at you. No. Yeah, still do your thing and work and try your best to pay the bills and all of that. But do not let it stop you from praising your king. I don't care if you got to do it on the way to work and back on your lunch break while you're working. Ain't no devil can stop you from praising your king on the job. I don't care what it is. The Bible says in every place, call on the name of the Lord. Let him see you on your lunch break deep in your studies. Let him see you turning your plate over on lunch break. Let him see you. You come home, seek the Lord. If a bill gets behind, don't stress. I know you got to deal with it. I'm not saying that, but don't stress. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. And I'm telling you this from experience because I had to go through that. I had to learn to trust God in rough situations. It wasn't always easy for me having a wife and children and now a ministry to uphold through Christ's hands. Come on. But it's based on experience. I can tell you firsthand, God is faithful. He is faithful. There were times where, man, it looked like, wow. And God would just come through supernaturally and take care of us. He's that faithful. Because he wants you to be a good steward. Show him order. Show him decency. Show him maturity. You'll be surprised what could qualify someone as a leader. God looks for certain characters. He's not looking for your charisma. He don't care about your amazing voice. He needs to see your love for him and that you'll obey him. That's why Paul even said not only to the homeless and the struggle, but he said for those that are able to help, 
Don't be high-minded and all weird. You should be willing to help the kingdom of heaven. That's scripture. And I've and let me just say this right now. A lot of y'all have been emailing me, brother words. You've never preached a message on giving. I've gone through 200 of your videos, bro. You don't have one specifically on tithes, offerings, and giving, which I respect because it says a lot about you. But, bro, can you talk about it? It's coming, y'all. When God leads me, I'll preach a message on it. Okay, and it's not going to be what you expect. We're going to go hard with that. But that's at another time. So let's go. I'm going to show you this devil's pie diagram. And I'm going to talk a little bit on the camera. Then we're going to tap out with a prayer. Is that cool? Is that cool? So listen, y'all struggling, especially brother. One of y'all sent me an email from Guatemala or Salvador. And you was like, bro, I love the ministry so much, but bro, I'm too poor to be a partner. Man, if I seen you, bro, I, I'll put you in a holy headlock, bro. You know what I'm saying? Don't you ever say that to us in your life. You want to be a partner, bro? Email us up. Let's get in this fight together. Money is just one thing in a ministry. It's not even near the top. Love you. All right? All right? So, diagram, I'm going to show you in Jesus' name. Bless. Okay, so in the name of Jesus Christ, here is the diagram that I was telling you about. Okay, now, I'm going to show you what the Illuminati Pyramid really means and why the eye is separated. The tip of the pyramid is separated from the rest of the pyramid, okay? We're going to focus right now on this section. I did two separate diagrams, okay? So now... Let's 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 focus on this first. So remember what I was telling y'all. Let's say the average person makes five hundred a week times four. That's two thousand a month, right? So let me show you how the devil really has his. Let me show you how the devil scheme works and how it is meant to keep people oppressed, depressed, and stressed by focusing on Pharaoh and the straw and the bricks. Rather than focusing on God in the wilderness, in the desert, seeking the most high. So let's just say the average rent, right? So let's say average rent is 900 which we know most times is more than that. But sometimes people get blessed and it is less than that. So we'll, whatever, we'll just say 900 right? How much is gas? Some people have gas, some don't. But usually gas is about a buck twenty a month. Now, a food... If you're a family of two or three or four, it goes up. So that, that might be subject to change depending on your household. But let's just say on average, food a month, three fifty, which in my opinion is too low. One trip, man, you you can easily spend shoe. One fifty, easy. Your phone bill, let's just call it a hundred dollars. Clothes. When the season changes, you gotta get clothes for your children, for yourself. Let's just put that at $100 a month. We'll be fair with that. Household supplies, toiletries, toothpaste. You know what I mean? All different types of necessities. We'll just call that $100. Uh, your car payment. Now, if you are rent, if you are paying on a car, it's much more higher for you. Depending on how your life was, if you grew up struggling, you got speeding tickets on the on you know being late to work, and your boss threatened to fire you. You caught a speeding ticket, it jacked up your insurance. Whatever your case could be, right? But let's just say between car and insurance, we're talking three hundred, which actually is very low, because usually a car payment alone is two hundred. Insurance can be one to two hundred alone, depending on your insurance. Electricity. Now, I remember when we were back in, in, in mass, National Grid went up 30%. Like, who do they think they are just rolling out of bed and saying, I want to up the, the, the price to 30%. That's insane, right? But let's just say electric every month is $150. But if it's in the winter, if you got to heat the crib. But in the summer, it can go to like $200 a month, right? Now, as far as the car... My wife and I, we've always strived to do things on Craigslist, buy cars outright, and my wife is very good at that. She gets led by the Lord. She's been such a blessing when it came, when it comes to finding the right vehicle by prayer, and vehicles that we pray over, and they run great, y'all. 
They might not last us 20 years, but it, it beats paying $300 on a car, and then you got to pay full coverage insurance, which is another $300, 350 You know what I'm saying? You, you're talking six, dollars $700 to impress somebody? And now, don't get me wrong. If that's the route you go, if that's the wisdom you want to use, if you can do it, I ain't mad at you. If you think, well, brother, words, I get a new car, I don't get issues. Nah, we ain't knocking you. We're just telling you what works for us. Now, now let's add it up now. So the two, the budget week the monthly was two thousand. So rent nine hundred, gas let's call it a hundred, food three fifty. So now we at what? Fourteen seventy or fourteen fifty, fifteen fifty, sixteen fifty, seventeen fifty, eighteen nineteen. We already passed 2000. We ain't even got over here to the electric. Can't you see Pimp Pharaoh? Can't you see how he got people struggling where the inflow does not match the outflow? Okay? And if you happen to have a job where you make more than 500, amen. But still, it doesn't leave you with a lot because we didn't even include taking care of God's kingdom. You didn't even add that in. You didn't add in alms. None of that. We're just talking worldly things. This is what the devil does. Now I'm going to break something down to you. The, the secret society. If you notice. The owners of all of these big companies. Whether it's the owner of the gas company in your state. The, the supermarkets. The phone companies. Clothing. Yeah, I'm saying household, the owner of the car dealership, the electric company, the owner of the housing, right? Most of them, not all of them, but most of them are in the secret society, whether they're Freemasons, right? And here is the secret they don't want you to know, that at the center, right here, they all meet. See how all the tips touch? They all meet, and they all work together in the money the money just flows because, yes, you give rent man money, but you also give the food man money. You also give the phone man money. You also give the electric man money. And the, the money in the secret society just flows. It flows. And it stays in their pocket, you see? It's, they all work together. But in the center, they're all together. They all connect. They all work together. That is how they're doing it. And the enemy, Pharaoh, is increasing the labor by removing the straw. He's not upping the pay, but he's upping the bills. He's increasing. Now it's winter time. Watch the electric company while out. Right? And a lot of times, it'd be strange. They'd be telling you, oh, it's this much me to read. And you're like, wait a minute. I ain't using no electric heaters. Y'all, something ain't right. How many of y'all have ever called the electric company like, hey, something ain't right? And what do they tell you? We don't care. Get it done. And there's righteous people of God who got debt. And a lot of people will judge you because you're in a debt or you're behind financially. And that's evil. The Bible says a poor man's wisdom is what? Despised. So Jesus said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Right? But they do it on purpose. You see, they do it on purpose. Now watch this. We're going to move over to this pie graph. This represents different religions or it could be different groups of Christian groups like Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever, right? All of them, right? Presbyterian, Methodist, whatever. How this one works, and I'll just give you one example. Here you got Roman Catholics. This represents the mass or the people, right? There's a buffer zone here. This buffer zone represents like, you know, the upper level people in charge. Now, I don't know in Roman Catholicism what that would be because they'd be all creeped out with fathers and priests and all of that weird stuff. But there's a buffer here that keeps these people from getting to here because there's a buffer zone of leaders that they can't get by to get to these people. Now, these people right here represent like the cardinals and the archbishops and all of these that really know about the Satanism that they're involved with. But in the middle, in this circle, if you notice all the points... What? Touch. 
And this this circle right here, this part right here, these are the ones that know who they worship and know who they serve. The Satanists, the Illuminati, the Pope, the Vatican, all of them, right? So these people can never find out about these because of the buffer zone. Same thing with Mormons. That's the same thing they do. Masons, usually Masons, you got the third degree. That's as far as people go. First, second, and third. Then you got the ones above them that are in charge that are in a higher degree. Then you got another higher degree. But here, here are who? The 31st, 32nd, and 33rd degree. And these masons, which could be like plumbers, business owners, cops, lawyers, or just regular people, they don't know about this most times. So just because you see someone with a mason plate, don't like... Make them out to be just, oh, they know everything that goes on. A lot of times they don't know. They just think it's a club. Or they've been told, but out of ignorance, they just reject the truth. But there's a buffer zone to keep these people to know that at the top, the same people that are at the top of the Catholicism are at the top of Masonry. You follow? Same thing with the false Judaism, which is the Babylonian Jews that study the Talmud, which actually blasphemes Christ in it, right? Same thing with Islam. You have the people, right? But then you have, uh, what are they called? The, um, oh, there's a word for it. It's like, a, it's kind of like a pastor per se, right? It's called the Imam, right? Imam, right? But then you got the, the high higher up ones, the Hayatola, Ayatollahs or whatever they call, right? But in the middle, they meet. I'm telling you, Mystery Babylon, they all meet in the center. They all work together. Same thing with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Same thing. This phone is kind of heavy, y'all. I'm trying to hold it up. Same thing with the Jehovah's Witness. You got the Watchtower folks. Man, they going door to door. You know what I'm saying? They are witnessing for who they think is Jehovah. Now, a lot of them are doing it out of ignorance, but they got the buffer zone. You know what I mean? And the, and the watch, and the, you know, the um, Jehovah's Witness, uh, Whatever they call that, the building they meet at. But then they got another buffer zone with the people that are higher up that know about these people. And these people right here are in the Illuminati. They know, but these people don't. You see how crazy that is? Same thing with Mormonism, right? I already made that up, right? I already told you about that one. Now, if we do the same thing with, I put here Christian uh, G C G. Hold on. I'll just put this for Christian groups. Christian Groups, right? So with Christian groups, it's the same thing. You got the people, the the uh, church folk, right? Then you got bishops and deacons, right? Then you got the, you know what I mean, the uh, elders or whatever. But here at the top, the Kenneth Copelands and the T.D. Jakes is, T.D. Jakes is meeting up with Oprah Winfrey in here, in here. Because Oprah Winfrey is a professing witch. She's in the new age. She said Jesus Christ is not the only way to heaven. And T.D. Jakes bows his knee to her. So they all meet here. Joe Osteen meets here. You understand? The people at the top meet here in the center together. This is the devil's pie. I hope y'all are getting this. Now, for the grand finale of what I was trying to explain to you. And I'm actually put it on the screen right now. I want you to look at this Illuminati symbol. Look at it. What do you see? Do you notice? Do you notice at the top of the pyramid? The all-seeing eye is separate from the rest of the pyramid. It's because it represents this. The all-seeing eye is separate from the people. You understand? So in reality, it's cut off right here where there's a gap. Nobody can get here unless they're, they're really sold out to the enemy. That is why they have the all C and I attached, detached, excuse me, from the pyramid. Because they're letting you know we are a different group of people. We run everything. We come together. We're the ones that decide when wars start and when wars finish. We're the ones that will up your electric bill, up your rent, but yet not give you a raise or even worse, take away 50 cents. 
This is what it is. But it's all designed to distract you and stress you and oppress you and depress you. So you do not seek the Lord in the wilderness in the desert like the children of Israel did. You are to reject that lie. Seek the face of God. Do not let this Ponzi scheme control you. You don't focus on that. Jesus said, the birds that neither sow nor reap, don't I take care of them? How much more will I take care of you? He will take care of your needs. He knows what you need more than you know it. Sometimes we focus on what we want more than what we need, and that's the problem. You can't focus on what you want. You got to first deal with what you need, your necessities. You have a roof over your head for your family. You got food, your light bill, things like that. And then after that, if God gives you that permission, you can go and do other things, right? So y'all listen, I encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the truth of the Illuminati pyramid. That is why the eye is detached from the rest of the pyramid. Because all the people they meet right here at the middle, they have secret meetings, trilateral commission, Bilderberg group, all of that, they meet here. And then they report back to the people. These people don't know about this. They think, oh, I'm praying to Mary. Oh, God is so good. Jesus, mother of Mary, whatever they say, right? But they don't know at the top, the Pope and them, they Luciferians, Mormons, Elder Chris. How are you an elder and you're, you're 17 on a bike? Hello, my name's Elder Chris. I wanted to tell you about the good news of the Lord. You know, how are you an elder, bro? You ain't got even facial hair, right? But these people here, a lot of them don't know, right? But the people at the top of Mormonism... Yeah, you see the you you see the founder of Mormonism. He was a wicked man. He was a racist, and he was a he was a warlock. Same thing with the Masons. Same thing with the Christian groups. They all meet, but a lot of the people on the outside edge they have no clue what's going on, or they've been warned and they mocked it when the true people of God warned them. So that's the danger you're up against, saints. When you warn these people, they got a spell on them. You got to pray and fast and don't take it personal. You got to pray against this. This is the eye. This is the eye of the pyramid. You got to strike at the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. This is the Nicolaia team. Come on. So this is a revelation I wanted to show y'all in the name of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, those in the struggle, don't let your financial situation determine who you are spiritually with Christ. Whether you're rich or poor. All are one in Christ. Remember the mark of the beast says there'll be neither what free or bond, rich or poor. Male or female, same principle. Devil don't care if you rich or poor, you better take that chip in his eyes. Same thing with Christ. If you rich, humble yourself, communicate with your money, and, and don't be lifted up in your finances. Be willing to help the kingdom of Christ. If you're poor, don't feel uh, humiliated and ashamed because Jesus said he didn't even have a place to live. So I encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ, y'all. I hope this word blessed you. Don't focus on the bricks and the straw and Pharaoh's will. Focus on Jesus Christ. He ain't your pimp. You understand? You ain't flipping bricks for him anymore. You getting out of here. Seek Jesus Christ while you survive. While you got to pay the rent. While you got to do these things. Make sure Christ is on the, on your mind at all times. Make sure you meditating on the word of God. Make sure you're fellowshipping. In the name of Jesus Christ. I reject the power of darkness off of your life. I want you to say Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive me of all my sins Lord. I thank you for this revelation. Lord, I break the spell of worry, of anxious, of stress and depression that the devil and Pharaoh got me, had me worrying, struggling and stressing, feeling ashamed of my financial situation. Lord, break the curse of poverty. Lord, break that spell that came through my generational bloodline. Break that, Lord Jesus Christ, if I reject mammon as a God and I put mammon under the feet of Christ. Lord Jesus, I want to worship you as God and you only, Lord. Money is subject unto you, Lord Jesus Christ. You said go to the fish's mouth. Lord, help me. I don't have to worry. I reject depression and stress. I will not let the Illuminati people that rule at the top of the pyramid stress me out by adding stress and removing straws from my brick making. I will praise the Lord whether I got to work hard or work. I don't care. I'm going to praise the Lord Jesus Christ and get ready for his return. I break the spell 
that is in this Ponzi scheme that the Illuminati has manifested. I reject it in Jesus Christ's name. I will not look to the right and the left like Peter. I will focus on Jesus and not fall into the water of stress. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And Father God, those that are yours, bless them and keep them and shield them, God. And bring the children of God together like the book of Acts chapter 4. That the, we can have our own government, Jesus, in the church. Where the finances are brought into the house of God to do his. Well, we don't, we don't have to mess with the devil's world. Father God, bring the church of Jesus Christ truly together in this last hour. To come together with a mighty force to wage war on the enemy. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.